Shadow Slave. By Guilty Three. Chapter 1231 Once More, With Feeling. Sunny dreamt of a black pyramid. Somber and wreathed in darkness, it rose from a sea of flawlessly white sand like a towering mountain. Its slopes were like vast plains, and its sharp peak was like a spear that pierced the heavens. Outlined against the backdrop of the starlit sky, the pyramid was like a black rift in the fabric of the world. Its edifice was built from millions of colossal stone blocks. Each block was darker than the darkness itself and perfectly aligned, leaving no gaps between them. And each of them. Each. Sonny felt a cold terror grip his heart. Each of the stone blocks. Was a seed of nightmare. There were millions of them, some already in bloom, some still waiting for their turn to blossom. At the base of the pyramid, the nightmares were shallow and weak. Higher, they were harrowing and unfathomable. And higher still. The slope of the colossal pyramid was broken and covered in cracks, with many blocks either shattered into dismal dust or missing. For vast scars were tainting its immaculate surface, as if some unholy beast had torn through the eternal stone with titanic claws. Above the scars was a narrow capstone. But Sonny. He was not someone who could gaze upon it. The moment he did, his soul convulsed in agony, and his consciousness shattered. The time reversed its flow, but then stuttered and froze. The time warped and screamed. The silhouette of the black pyramid exploded into a myriad of lightless shards. And then, Sonny was no more. There was the sound of wind whistling in his ears. He was falling. Coming to his senses, still disoriented, he sighed. Here we go again. Before doing anything else, Sonny summoned the essence pearl. The next moment, he hit the water. Ha! Huh. I just knew this would to happen. Instead of thrashing wildly, he let his body sink and waited for the breathing memory to manifest itself. At the same time, Sonny extended his shadow sense outward and tried to understand the nature of his surroundings. Water. Nothing but water. Well, that's strange. Wasn't I in the desert just a few moments ago? They entered the nightmare through a giant block of black stone that lay between the dunes, half buried in the sand. Since the seed was in the desert, the nightmare was also supposed to take place in the desert. Unless the spell had sent them in a past so distant that the desert itself did not exist yet, hidden at the bottom of a sea. The thing, though, was that. That's. Very strange. The cool water around him was not seawater. It was fresh water. If Sonny was so inclined, he could open his mouth and drink as much as he wanted. Not that he would, of course. Huh. One thing was certain. Sonny had already guessed it before, but after witnessing the tomb of Ariel in the vision at the start of the nightmare, he was now sure, the giant block of black stone was, in fact, one of the building blocks of the Great Pyramid. The unimaginable blow that had left four scars on the surface of the daemon's tomb must have sent quite a few of them flying far away into the desert. And Mordred had just happened to stumble upon one. Just as expected, the Prince of Nothing had ulterior motives. Or maybe they had just gotten terribly unlucky. Or maybe it was fate. In any case. Finally. The essence pearl finished weaving itself from sparks of ethereal light, and Sonny could breathe again. He could also see again, not that it was of any use, in any direction he looked, there was nothing but clear water. There was a current, too. A strong and turbulent one. Sonny felt himself being pulled by it, unable to resist. Back to the surface. Breathing out a little, he watched the direction in which the bubbles rose, and followed. This time, Sonny did not have to panic and worry about drowning, since he had come prepared. The essence pearl was held safely in his mouth. Some time later, his head broke the surface of the water. Sonny looked around and frowned. Everything was covered in thick fog and suffused with somber twilight. He couldn't see far, and even his shadow sense seemed to be dulled by the mist. If there was one consolation, it was that the mist seemed to be of a harmless, albeit somewhat mystical, kind. It was not the harrowing fog of the hollow mountains or its like. I should be thankful, I guess. But he did not. Instead, Sonny felt. Numb. He had been in a constant state of tension since the start of the Battle of the Black Skull. The third nightmare was in no way less of an ordeal than the nightmare desert, but for now, at least, Sonny was safe, there were no nightmare creatures in the water, and no terrible danger waiting to swallow him alive. 
And so, able to relax for the first time since forever, Sunny suddenly felt utterly exhausted, deeply tired, drained of all feelings, and numb. With a sigh, he slowly spun in the water, and eventually noticed an unclear shape swaying on the waves some distance away, hidden by the mist. With nothing better to do, Sonny started to swim in that direction. Less than a minute later, he reached a large piece of wood resting on the water. The piece of floating wood was flat and irregularly shaped, with jagged edges, like a broken fragment of a ship's hull. Most importantly, it was big enough for Sonny to climb on, with plenty of room to spare. Pulling his tired body out of the water, Sonny climbed onto the slightly curved wooden raft and sprawled on it, looking up. There was no sky, only swirling mist. His thoughts were slow and heavy. Well. At least it's not so terribly hot anymore. That desert was a real nightmare. The Nightmare Desert. Ah, what a fitting name. He was now inside the third nightmare. And an exceedingly bizarre one, at that. The source of the nightmare was the tomb of Ariel. Funnily enough, the cohort had failed to reach the real pyramid in the dream realm, but still ended up brushing against the illusory copy of it. The very beginning of the nightmare was highly unusual, as well. Sonny had not seen the time flowing in reverse, as it was supposed to happen, so he had no idea where exactly he found himself, and had no hint of what he needed to do to resolve the conflict of the seed. And lastly. 13 million challengers. What the hell was that? Had the spell malfunctioned? There were not even a million awakened in the whole world, let alone anywhere near the nightmare desert. That was the strangest part. But Sonny. He was too tired to think about all that right now. I'm going to have to explore the area first. Then, I'll start searching for the others. We'll figure something out together. With that, he slowly inhaled and closed his eyes. A few moments later, Sonny was lulled to sleep by the gentle swaying of the water. No, no. Not again. Please. Sonny woke up with a yell and cursed, feeling his wooden shelter lurch and almost capsize because of his sudden movement. The remnants of a dire nightmare were already disappearing from his memory, leaving behind only the bitter taste of madness and despair. He shivered slightly, then grimaced and rubbed his face. What the hell? Now I'm having nightmares within a nightmare. What a great damn start to the day. Suddenly consumed by anger, he stood up, clenching his fists, and shouted, Curse it. Curse it all. His hoarse voice drowned in the mist. The mist did not look as thick as it had before, but it still veiled the entire world. There was nothing within the reach of his shadow sense except for the endless expanse of flowing water. Curse it all. Sonny shut his eyes for a moment, then winced and sat back down. He was in a terrible mood. What was even the point of it all? He was being pulled by the current. Just like he had always been before. For most of his life, Sonny had just gone with the flow, struggling to survive and only reacting to things that threatened him. Going to Antarctica was perhaps the first real decision he had made for himself. Sure, it might have been a reaction as well. But later, Sonny developed an understanding of what he wanted to achieve. He had wanted to protect the civilians of the Southern Quadrant and the soldiers of the evacuation army. He had wanted to prevent the great clans from messing everything up. The things he had done in East Antarctica were not a reaction, instead, they were the result of an active desire to change the world in the way he saw fit. That was the first time Sonny had tentatively attempted to bend the world to his will, instead of letting the world press him into the ground. And for what? What was the result? The siege capitals of East Antarctica were, most likely, already destroyed. The evacuation army had been wiped out, and the civilians had been slaughtered. There was a desperate hope in his heart that some miracle had happened, saving them all, but Sonny knew that it was a futile dream. When had there ever been a miracle like that? No. He failed. Ah. The world was not so easily bent. Damn it. Sonny stared into the mist with resentment. And then, he heard a voice, done feeling sorry for yourself yet. What the? With a start, Sonny flinched away from the source of the voice. Falling on the wet surface of the wooden raft, he crawled back and looked up. There was a slender figure standing above him, with a mocking smile on his face. It was a young man with black hair, alabaster skin, and a lithe build. He was wearing a simple tunic of beautiful black silk and a pair of dainty silk shoes, looking like a porcelain doll. 
His eyes were like two pools of cold darkness. The young man was sunny. Or rather, it was the sin of solace. However, the spirit of the cursed sword did not look vague and blurry anymore. It looked utterly complete and real. In fact, it looked slightly more real than Sonny himself. Chapter 1232, Lost in the Mist What the hell? Sonny reached the edge of his makeshift raft and froze there, his fingers submerged in water. A perfect copy of him was standing motionlessly a few meters away, looking down with a mocking smile on his lips. The pale face, the onyx eyes, the raven black hair. It was all the same. But the apparition was much more composed and full of malice than Sonny. There was a boundless ocean of madness hiding behind the cold darkness of its amused gaze. For a moment, Sonny was convinced that one of Mordred's reflections had somehow found him within the mist. But the tone with which the apparition spoke was simply too familiar. With a shudder, he realized that this copy of him was the manifestation of the sin of solace. However. Gods. You look so pathetic. Yeah. That's definitely that damned sword. But how could it be? At first, Sonny had only heard indistinct whispers when holding the sin of solace. Later, he could clearly hear its voice. And later still, after Falcon Scott, a vague illusory figure would follow him around. Now, however, that figure seemed perfectly real. That was not the most frightening fact, though. The most frightening thing was that Sonny did not have the sin of solace summoned. How could the spirit of the cursed sword be here, if the sword itself still rested within the still darkness of his soul? Suddenly, a chill ran down Sonny's spine. As if reading his mind, the sin of solace laughed. Ah, how fun. I'll give you some credit, lost from light. You never fail to amuse, at least. What, are you afraid of me now? Sonny hated to admit it, but he was. He did not know what to expect from the cursed Jen. It was tied to Ariel, after all, who was both the demon of dread and the architect of the harrowing pyramid of nightmares. Even if the transcendent memory only contained a facsimile of a distant whisper left behind by the ancient daemon, it was still an artifact of terrifying power. He knew that power all too well. Sonny had slain many corrupted nightmare creatures with its help, after all, some of whom he had no business being able to kill, and, as a result, was exposed to its destructive influence in turn. He had thought that he was handling the insidious influence of the sin of solace well. But if he had, then why did the apparition feel more real than ever? How was it able to appear before him without him even holding the cursed sword? Sonny remained silent for a while, then forced out a smile. Afraid of you? Nonsense. Of course not. The sin of solace tilted his head a little, studying Sonny with some interest. Oh. But I think you should. His voice sounded relaxed, but that only made the words more chilling to hear. However, Sonny exhaled with relief. Well, why would I? You're not real. Am I supposed to be frightened of every imaginary bastard? Life's too short for that. The doll-like young man in front of him raised an eyebrow. Are you sure that I am not real? Sonny scoffed. I wasn't before, but I am now. I suspected for a long time, of course, but since you were not annoying enough to waste my time on getting to the bottom of this, I chose to concentrate on other things. But hey, since it's just the two of us now, let me clear a few things. He moved away from the edge of the makeshift raft and looked up at the sin of solace while still remaining in a sitting position. There's no point in pretending to be something that you are not. And what you are not is a real being. No, you're just a tiny, insignificant part of my mind that the enchantments of the sin of solace turned against me. How do I know? Well, you are a part of me, so you should already be aware. The apparition remained silent, looking at him with curiosity. Sonny shook his head. I know because I can lie when I talk to you, and I also don't have to answer all of your questions. That is only possible when I am talking to myself. You asked me if I was done feeling sorry for myself. I was not compelled to answer. You asked if I was afraid of you. For a moment or two, I was, and yet I was able to say that I wasn't. So. He grimaced. Really, I should have realized it the first time you kept distracting me with annoying questions, and I told you to shut up instead of giving you a real answer. Ah. I feel ashamed that it took me so long. The sin of solace chuckled. 
Oh, but your flaw is a subjective thing, isn't it? Maybe you can lie to me not because I am a part of you, but simply because you believe that I am a part of you. Sunny smiled. Wouldn't it be great, if my flaw was so easy to deceive? No, that is not the case. Plus, I had no reason to believe that you weren't an actual entity before. If anything, it would have been the other way around. The apparition remained motionless, staring at him with a bleak expression. Then, the spirit of the cursed sword. The small broken piece of Sonny's own mind. Sighed. All right, you caught me. I am not real. Indeed, I am just a figment of your imagination. The sin of solace was quiet for a few moments, and then grinned. But, have you not considered? That, maybe, quarreling and conversing with a splintered piece of your own mind is a bit more frightening than being haunted by a cursed sword. He laughed. I mean, wouldn't that mean that you have completely lost your mind? Lost from light. Damn lunatic. Oh, this is simply wonderful. Sonny stared at the laughing copy of himself with a somber expression. For once, he had nothing to say. After a few long moments, he turned away and uttered through gritted teeth, shut up. The water was murmuring softly as the strong current pulled the makeshift raft forward. The mist was slowly growing less thick, but Sonny still couldn't see or feel anything in it. When he grew thirsty, he summoned the endless spring and drank from it, looking at the clear water around him with suspicion. When he got hungry, he summoned the covetous coffer and took out some rations from inside it. I should have stocked up before leaving the siege capital. To Sonny's disappointment, his supplies were already running low. He had kept the coffer well stocked while serving as an army scout, but after becoming an envoy to Clan Valor, there was no need to anymore. So, there had not been a lot of useful things left inside the bottomless chest at the start of the nightmare. It was hard to tell how much time had passed since Sonny entered the nightmare, too. The dim twilight permeating the mist never grew brighter or darker. However, he felt as if it had not been more than a couple of days. He had spent most of his time numbly staring at the wood grain of his makeshift raft. For some reason, it looked strangely familiar. The strange sense of familiarity was driving Sonny crazy. But then again, perhaps it was the fact that he had gone crazy that caused the irrational sense of familiarity with a random piece of flotsam. After all, there had to be a reason why the spirit of the sin of solace was suddenly much more clear, frighteningly real, and even able to appear without Sonny summoning the cursed sword. The less stable his mental state was, the more substantial the presence of the apparition was supposed to be. Sonny did not feel particularly insane, just numb, heartbroken, and emotionally drained. However, which lunatic knew of their madness? The sin of solace, meanwhile, was behaving rather strangely. Sonny was painfully aware of his many failures, so he had expected the apparition to barrage him with mockery and contempt. Did you want to protect the people of Antarctica? Did you think that your pathetic self was capable of protecting anything? Stuff like that. Hell. After that last conversation with Morgan, Sonny knew that the waking world was more or less doomed. He didn't even know if rain would be okay. The sin of solace could have used that fact to drive a nail into his heart, too. But the cursed sword mostly remained silent. At some point, Sonny glanced at the apparition, which was still standing in the spot where it first appeared, and raised an eyebrow, hey. Aren't you going to mock me? Don't you want to remind me how pitiful and pathetic I am? Sonny's perfect copy stared at him for a few moments, then looked away with indifference. That grew old ages ago. I can't be bothered. Sonny frowned. Come to think of it. Why is it that you haven't moved a single centimeter in all this time? The sin of solace scoffed. Where am I supposed to go? This raft is not that large. Well, I might as well stand on water, true. But why should I? Sonny studied him for a bit, then shook his head. No. I think you're hiding something. His hallucination laughed. Oh, yeah. So, now you are paranoid, too. Instead of answering, Sonny rose from where he was sitting and took a step toward the sin of solace. His copy frowned. What do you think you're? Get lost. Sonny pushed the apparition aside, forcing it to take a step back and sway dangerously at the very edge of the makeshift raft, almost falling into the water. The sin of solace cursed, but Sonny paid him no attention. Instead, he stared at the spot where the hallucination had been standing all this time. Interesting. 
There, a single rune was roughly carved into the wood. 